Hi guys, this is a video response to Count Four's video, Lies from Evangelists About Islam. So, the first thing I did was try to look up who Ken Hovind was. I found him on Wikipedia, and I think Ken doesn't only lie about Islam. I think Ken lies about a lot of other things to a lot of other people. I'll just read you a paragraph of Wikipedia. It says, Ken Hovind has had several contacts with law enforcement, including charges of assault and battery, falsely declaring bankruptcy, making threats against federal officials, filing false complaints, failing to get necessary building permits, and various tax-related charges. He has been convicted of fed federal tax and related charges and is currently serving a 10-year sentence for these. So, now that we're familiar with who Kent is exactly, uh, we'll move on. Uh, to what he claims about Islam. Uh, we have a great book we sell in our bookstore called The Prophet by Jack Chick's ministry. Uh, you can get it uh, the, about the history of how the Catholic Church was involved in the creation of Islam in order to try to get the Holy Land back. It backfired on him and now we have these two religions, uh, Islam and Catholicism. But actually Catholicism started the Church of Islam. We could spend hours on that one. You can find extracts of that book, The Prophet, on David Icke's website uh, basically it's written by a man called Alberto Rivera and whatever he claims he claims without any evidence let, uh, let me just read an extract from uh, David Icke's website for you. it says what I'm going to tell you is what I learned in secret briefings in the Vatican when I was a Jesuit priest under oath and induction a Jesuit cardinal named Augustine B. showed us how desperately the Roman Catholics wanted Jerusalem at the end of the 3rd century. Because of its religious history and strategic location, the holy city was considered a priceless treasure. A scheme had to be developed to make sure Jerusalem uh, became a Roman Catholic city. So you see, uh, there's no evidence, it's just hearsay what he heard in this secret meet, uh, briefing that he had when he was part of the Catholic Church. So he can, he's free to make up whatever he wants, he doesn't need evidence because some man uh, somewhere told him so. And it's not the God of the Bible. Again, get the book The Prophet if you want to get more on that. Muslims knew Muhammad was a prophet because he had a mole on his back. That was the sign he was a prophet. He had a mole. Holy moly. Where do we get something like that anyway? Holy moly, Kent. I'm reading the Hadith. But there's no mention of them all. It says Jabir Samura reported, I saw the seal on his back as if it were a pigeon's egg. Right. Now, I'm sure even the Arabs have seen a mole or two in their lives. And why was this birthmark so important? Uh, important. Basically, the, the birthmark contained the writing that said, Muhammadan Rasulullah, meaning uh, Muhammad, the Prophet of Allah. Then the book mentions that there was an uncle with him who the priest told. And now, who was this uncle? The uncle was Abu Talib. And what do we know about Abu Talib? That he never converted to Islam. Now, what Kent tries to suggest is that the Arabs, Arabs used this criterion to judge whether someone was a prophet or not and this is clearly not the case because if the man with him with the prophet peace be upon him did not convert what water does that hold what, what water does that argument hold so to put it simply the Arabs didn't believe that the prophet was the prophet be just because they had a mole on their back or because of the seal on their back I mean it just doesn't make any sense and it's claimed it without any evidence. The Quran says, when he, this man, I can't pronounce his name, reached the setting of the sun, he found that it set in a pond of murky water. The Quran teaches the sun goes down and sets in a pond of water. This is scientifically inaccurate, okay? That's not what happens. The Quran is loaded with things that are scientifically and spiritually false, inaccurate, they're wrong. The oh, this old verse, this is a verse that evangelists and missionaries tried to uh, use to prove that the Quran says that the sun sets in murky water. But is the verse actually saying that? I mean, the verse is, uh, you can find it on chapter 18, verse 86. 
and it says until he reached the setting of the sun he found it setting in a spring of murky water this is the perception of Zulkarnain and this has been dealt with many many times and I'm sure I don't have to go into detail with it because many people have answered it before and it's just frankly getting old now the Quran commands Allah said any person who leaves Islam or encourages others to do so should be seized and slain here we find another old missionary trick taking verses and quoting them out of context what Kent tries to do is build up an image of Islam being intolerant and violent but I can do the same with the Bible for example second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 13 that whoever whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman it's very very simple to do but just because I'm saying it doesn't necessarily make it true does it Kent okay let's take a look at the whole verse so chapter 4 verse 89 they wish, uh, they but wish that ye should reject faith as they do and thus be on the same footing as they not uh, but take not friends from their ranks until they flee in the way of Allah from what is forbidden but is but if they turn renegades seize them and slay them wherever ye find them and in any case take no friends or helpers from their ranks so the key words there were but if they turn renegades okay let's look at the worst verse before that to put it into context it says why should ye be divided into two parties about the hypocrites Allah hath set Allah hath upset them for their evil deeds would ye guide those whom Allah hath thrown out of the way for those whom Allah hath thrown out of the way never shalt thou find the way so the tafsir of and this is just a tafsir about that verse and all it's basically saying is that the verse was revealed about 10 hypocrites who left Islam and Medina to go for Mecca and uh, the Muslims were in two opinions whether they could fight um, these former Muslims in battle or not if they were to meet in battle if, and if uh, the hypocrites were to join the Meccans in fighting them and all this verse does is clear up uh, that argument and says yes it's lawful to fight them if they fight you let's read the verse after 418 and 490 uh, chapter 4 verse 90 except those who enj uh, join a group between whom you and there is a treaty of peace or those who approach you with their hearts restraining them from fighting you as well as fighting their own people if Allah had pleased he could have given them power over you and they would have fought you therefore if they withdraw from you but fight you not and instead send you guarantees of peace then Allah hath opened no way for you to war against them so it's basically saying the tribes that you have treaties with if those hypocrites and apostates go and join their tribes and don't fight you you can't fight them Allah told Muhammad that all those who opposed his message should be killed or they should be nailed to a tree with their and their or their hands and legs should be cut off here's another mission mission trick complete fabrication now you saw what Kent just quoted I'll quote the actual verse to you it says as to those who reject faith if they had everything on earth and twice repeated to give as ransom for the penalty of the day of judgment it would never be accepted of them theirs would be a grievous penalty now where's all that stuff about chopping off of limbs and nailing to trees in this verse it's not there it's just a complete fabrication